Welcome to the show, Mr. Humble You. First and last name, I assume. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my last name. <laughs> it is, uh, it's Joseph, first name. Um, I really don't go by a last name. I've just been calling myself Joseph from, from Humble You. So it's great to be here, Tom. Yeah, it's awesome. What, what inspired you to call your social media handle Humble You? I really like that name. Yeah, it's an interesting story. And it's funny you ask because no one really asked. Um, you know, I was thinking about this business idea maybe a year or two ago. And I'm just sitting in a Starbucks and, and Humble came up. And I'm just like working with this word, trying to figure it out, looking for a website that doesn't have that name. And Humble You just came up and it sounded right. And then I thought about it. And it's really about the ego, you know, trying to humble that ego to a space where it can accept itself, you know, the, the overall totality of what the self is. And we'll get into that, um, I'm, I'm sure, with some of the material that we'll get into to. But yeah, you know, it's really about that, that humility, that humility that not a lot of people can, can get to. Um, and it's needed for this growth that, that everyone's trying to get towards. So mm-hmm. I figured it's a great name and, and I built a whole media around it. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Humility is one of those things that, uh, it, it's so important all the time and we can get so lost in, you know, remaining comfortable and, mm-hmm. uh, it unfortunately growth, you know, growth sounds lovely on the surface, but what actually constitutes growth really is, is a lot of pain. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And a, a great example is just building muscle, you know, to grow that muscle, you got to go through a little bit of pain and um, you know, it provides depth to life too. A lot of people are scared of the darkness, scared of the pain, but without that, you know, you're not living a full life. And I feel like that's the whole idea of, of what life's about is living a full experience, you know, experience in the light and darks, the good and bads and, and just powering through it and really just in, enjoying what life brings you each day. Mm, absolutely, man. Yeah. So for people that aren't aware of what you do and who you are, because they're not necessarily the same thing, um, give us a brief, uh, a brief introduction. Yeah. So I, I actually started off as a TV meteorologist over here in the U S I'm in New Jersey. I used to work in Michigan for a CBS location. Um, it was a, it was a great station, number one station in the area. I was doing the weather with the green screen behind me, the whole deal, (laughs) but you know what, you know, behind the scenes, I was not happy seeing some of the stuff going on. We don't have to get into the details, but a lot of superficial personalities, uh, some fake news here and there. And I figured I, you know, I need to make a life switch because I was going into work just feeling like, uh, just not feeling connected anymore. You know, the honeymoon phase kind of wore off that TV life wore off. And I was like, okay, I got to make a change. It was a difficult decision, but I went back to school, uh, studied psychology, got a clinical psychology degree. And then I saw the power behind what you can do with your mind. And it's not only just mental, it's physical. You know, if you really do that inner work and I started noticing physical changes and I said, wow, this is beyond just psychology. This is, you know, this is a whole deal that that's mind energy body. Um, so then I got a coaching certification because of that, because I figured I would just limit myself with just the psychology. And it's really expanded my work to be able to work with people individually, see them as individuals. I think that's huge. Not putting them in boxes and really seeing what their situation is. Uh, I like to use alchemical terms, the premium material that they bring in and then see how we can kind of work with it and see where we can get to based off of where they want to go. You know, it's about them where they want to go. So that's uh, where I'm at today. Now I have a a podcast uh, with the company. I do a lot of media for free. I'm building a membership program. I do live events that do like coaching and psychology, little activities and tools. Um, So lots going on over here. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. So did you, were you able to bring any of the, the, the media stuff from your previous job into any, anything that you're doing now? Yeah, I didn't think about it at first, but I'm, I'm watching myself and, you know, I used to make graphics for the weather and I'm noticing I'm putting some of those abilities into some of my um, graphics that I make for social media. And then just the, the presentation, you know, just talking and, and being on camera. I'm so used to it um, because, you know, live TV, it's live. Mm. Uh, the newscasts are live. Um, and for the weather person, you see the person sitting at the desk, the anchor, they're reading a script. The weather person, they have to flip the camera so you could see the green screen behind you. So you have to ad lib the entire time for three minutes. So after a couple of times, you get used to that just flowing and going. And it really helps out in this kind of work, because when you're speaking to people, if you could speak with that kind of power, uh, if you could speak to their hearts, you know, that that can move and groove things. Uh, If if someone else is kind of speaking just at the surface, uh, you know, maybe they're not getting to the true roots. 
Yeah, it's it's true that that's that uh, you know you mentioned contrast before of uh, having the good and the bad, and sometimes um, having superficiality as well as the, the deep stuff can be necessary because you have to have the especially when you're in front of the camera, you have to have the bravado and the ability to enunciate and, and all these types of things, which are you know relatively speaking superficial. But then you know people that are listening to you um, are going to be attracted and going to maintain that awareness if you're really speaking from the heart. So it sounds like you've really found that, that, that mix there of, of psychology of something that's really, really important to you and something that, you know, you live and breathe. You can look at your social media and you just see that this is something that you live and breathe and would talk about anyway, whether it was a business or not, but you also bring that, that character and that personality, which makes it kind of fun because I think a lot of shadow work and Jungian psychology and all this stuff is, um, it's, it's almost like a fad at the moment, you know, but there are people that um, advertise it as though it's this really deep, dark thing. And there are elements of it, but ultimately life is, um, doesn't have to be just all serious all the time. And I think you do a really good job of, of you know, balancing that. Yeah. Thank you so much. And that's great that you said that. And the thing about Jungian psychology, you know, if you really dig into it, it's analytical psychology and people don't understand what it means. And it's really just looking specifically at, at, at what's going on and then comparing it to mythology, comparing it to the past, comparing it to the ancients, comparing it to different things. So we can sort what's going on in the mind out because the mind is just, it doesn't have, it doesn't have its own consciousness in a sense. It's not thinking clearly. Um, So sometimes you got to make these connections and that's what analytical psychology is. And there's a lot of like spirituality with it and it could be twisted and manangled in there in someone else's own way. Um, but it's really about this individuation process of getting to your true self. And people talk about the higher self. It's sort of that idea. Um, and, and I think it's really powerful if you could look at it in those, in those lenses uh, without the, the scariness and the spookiness. Um, but then it also embracing the darkness because that's part of it. And, and without that, like we said earlier, it's really hard to live a full whole life and, and wholeness, you know, and, instead of perfection is really where you want to start to aim towards. Mm. Yeah. So was that, was that the part of psychology that you gravitated to um, pretty quickly when you were doing your degree or like, what was, what was your degree? Like, what were you studying? And then how did you find Jungian psychology? Yeah, it was a quick transition. I was actually going to church. I never went to like Christian church and I started going to church after I left the TV business or, or in the transition period because they made me actually stay there for a few months, which was really difficult to train the next person. So I'm sitting there, you know, I'm going to church and, and I'm, 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 I'm picking up this spirit. You know, I never had that and I've been searching for it and it felt good in the moment. You know, I had some experiences, we won't get into it. It, it pulled me away from the church, but um, I saw a quote from Carl Jung and he said, no tree can grow to heaven unless its roots reach down to hell. And that was it. It was just like everything clicked because the Christians never talk about the roots. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about everything up, but they won't talk about the roots. And, And it always had this bad name to it. And once I was able to embrace it and then see my darkness and then see my projections and then watch myself comparing myself to others and what I was doing and what I was thinking, a lot of work a lot of inner work, but that work brought me to such a great level because I was able to release so much that it was holding within and I finally could breathe, you know? And then when I actually breathe, did the breathing work, you know, some breathing exercises, um, that, that just started really expanding things to a whole new level. Wow. That was the psychology that got me primed to be able to get into this growth. If I didn't have the psychology, I would quit. Yeah, exactly. Like the door was slightly ajar for you, but it's so interesting that you were actually called for lack of a better word into being in a church and you you grew up you'd grown up as a as an atheist or a secularist or yeah i went to like a catholic school as a kid and i actually didn't like it as a young kid i was like you know what this doesn't feel right um you know and and I, everyone has their own ways but um uh, my family just wasn't really into it they weren't atheists but they just weren't into it maybe they went to church once a year for christmas or something it was uh, you know kind of just like a family thing it wasn't a true spirituality and no one in my family really had much spirituality to them um and that was what i always like wanted i feel like in my life i was always looking for something that made sense and and finally just what i call it is spiritualizing myself, like getting into my own spirituality and not depending on anything outside of me. I think that's what the game change was for me. Yeah, that makes sense. I was actually talking to a friend about this today, this idea of, uh, you know, spirituality, um, you know, whatever your definition is of that. To me, it's, it can be something as simple as connection, just having a feeling like, you know, we're we're connected. You, You don't need God for that, but 
we're so you can even speak about it from the evolutionary perspective of how how wired we are for that connection and that even just talking you know we we've uh, this is one of the things why I love podcasting so much because it forces me to connect and uh you know it seems like we're kind of losing some of that today yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my. Uh, listen, when I go out and I love going out in the public and I'm someone that goes and I'll talk to somebody, you know, hello, good to see you. I did a video for new year's and I was going around saying happy new year. I saw this man. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. So if they come up to me, then I'll, you know, I'll start talking to them. It took me about two hours to get just a few happy new years back wow. and I couldn't get much conversation. And I understand the virus. I do understand the virus. There's mm-hmm. a lot of fear out there with the virus, but you know, still at a distance, you can kind of say happy new year to someone. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's a quickening, you know, because last year, if I did this, it would be a whole different situation. And just walking around the vibe is just, it's gone. It's, it's mm-hmm. so, I don't know. It's just, I, I was out at a restaurant and, and the chatter was lower. I was like mm-hmm. talking to somebody. And I said, do you hear this around us? I'm like, this is not a normal Friday night. Mm-hmm. You know, something doesn't feel right in the air. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta push through it at some point. Um, and, and yeah. like I say, you know, you gotta embrace the darkness. So maybe it's okay for now, but at some point we do have to wake up because if we get stuck here, you know, how energy is, it just likes to get used to its state. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. What's it, what's it like over there at the moment? We're kind of following, I'm from the very low part of Australia. We, we went through a major lockdown and uh, because our cases spiked so severely, but through that lockdown, we were in lockdown for, I think like 111 days. We couldn't travel further than five Ks from our home. We could only leave our home for like four. I think it was one of the most uh, severe lockdowns in the world at the time. I'm not sure if things have changed now, but now we haven't had a case. We had a couple of cases about a week ago or two, but we have basically been seven weeks of zero cases. So it kind of worked out in the end there, but what's it like? Uh, what's it like on ground over there? So you're in New Jersey. <laughs> See, I'm a podcast host and I want to ask you like a thousand questions right now. <laughs> that, that is, that has to be difficult. It was crazy. It was crazy. Oh man. It was uh, yeah. I went a bit nuts. Um, Cause you get so attached to, all right, what do I have to do to keep myself sane? You know, if I can only stay in my house, so I've got to develop a very stringent routine, you know, to, to maintain a sense of self and identity and all that kind of thing. Um, but I also found myself, uh, and you know, my partner and I were lucky because Siobhan's, um, growing her breathwork business and I had my podcasting and at the time counseling. Um, so we were quite lucky that we had our own kind of creative exploits, uh, mm-hmm. but the people that had lost their jobs for people that had to transition dramatically, uh, it was really, really tough. And, you know, it's not surprising that so many people were struggling existentially because so much of that stuff, that behavior, um, that their identity had cling to had been taken from them. I haven't, I haven't felt that a little bit myself, you know, because, I'm naturally an extrovert. I'm not an introvert. I like, I love people and I can be a little bit boisterous and things as well. So I, you know, I'm an extrovert and I was like, well, this is kind of challenging. So it was a difficult time. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Especially for the extroverts. I was just talking about this on a podcast, like for the introverts, this isn't that bad and I'm more introverted. Um, but no, no, it's, I mean, it's difficult and we, you know, we got to get to a point hopefully where we, we can see a way out. Mm. Um, and I'm not seeing it yet. I'm just not seeing it. It doesn't seem like it's slowing down here. It just seems like we're seesawing, you know, we'll lower the cases. Everything's feeling good, but we're still not opening yet. And then the cases start spiking. Um, at the end of the summer, things started looking good. And then the fall and winter hit. And then it was, uh, it was a lockdown, but it's different here because every state is deciding how they want to handle the coronavirus. Uh, I'm in New Jersey along the coast. I'm so lucky. I'm on an Island where there's not many people. I don't have to deal with, um, you know, it's not like a major lockdown. There's still businesses open and they're all very close to me. So it, it, it hasn't been too rough on me and I don't want to come across bocious or, you know, people are like, oh, this kid. Um, but, but I'm just, you know, that's just my experience. Um, and, and we'll see, we'll see how things go over the next year. Um, but it looks like we're going to be stuck in this, uh, at least in America over the, the summer too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not going away anytime soon. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, you were talking before about, um, different vibes and not being able to get that hi, how are you happy new year type thing. And there's a lot of, whether it's justified or not, there's a lot of fear in the world and, and even just wearing a mask, you know, it creates, it, it adds a further disconnect, a further separation from the very, you know, we can't see your facial expression. So is this guy taking a piss? Is he like making fun of me or does he actually just want me to say happy new year? Like it's, there's this, you know, come back to that idea of disconnection and that's, you know, that, that lack of spirituality, if you define it. 
in a certain it, that's it that's it yeah and that's what i'm that's what i'm noticing the spirit's like lacking it's mm. gone it's just it's just not there right now yeah do you feel like we're moving to a place now in in our world where people are starting to question spirituality um as something that's inherent with religion This one's difficult because what I'm noticing is, is everyone keeps redefining their spirituality. And the way that I see it is if you truly want to, if you truly want to grow and you truly want to be spiritual, you have to throw all the externals away. Mm. You have to be able to really sit in stillness. And I feel like a lot of people have these clutches. So, you know, think psychologically, we, children going to sleep, they have the blankie. If, if you don't pull that blankie away, you know, they're going to become dependent on that. And it's going to be difficult for them to fall asleep unless the blankie's there. Hmm. I see this a little bit in the spiritual world. And I don't want to come across again rude, but, you know, humble you. That's the name. <laughs> I just <laughs> feel <good>. like <laughs> I just feel like they're clutches and, and there's still a little bit of fear of, of true spirituality. That's yeah. my thoughts, you know, and I think spirituality is, you know, connecting with yourself, meditating, be able to be, sit there and be still and be peaceful and blissful and, and see what comes up and see what's arising and watch your projections and, and watch your judgments, especially, um, and keep yourself humble because it's easy for that ego to start floating up and, and get stuck in the conscious realm and lose track of its true purpose in that center point. Um, that's why balance is so key. Uh, balance is always talked about, stay centered. Um, and that's really what that's about, at least mentally, uh, mm -hmm. to stay balanced is really keep yourself in that, in that humble space. Yeah. That's interesting. That's cool. So, so spirituality is then, you know, it's, it's, it's a connection to self, you know, which is then, and, and the truer that is it, you, you build that connection to other uh, at the same time. What, yeah. That's like that one and all kind of concept. Yeah. One and all. You know? yeah, yeah. yeah, Absolutely. And you can see that happening superficially as well, because, you know, we were talking about lockdown before people are coming home, there's only so much to do at home. So we're clinging on to these little dopamine hits, these little pleasures, these little needs to maintain that sense of self. Um, it is hard, isn't it? <laughs> it's hard to go deep. <laughs> It's yeah, it's difficult. It's, it's not easy work. I just posted something about it, how, you know, people always talk about the shadow work now it's so normalized, but true shadow work requires a lot of ingredients before you get started. And you got to have that connection first of all, with yourself and you got to be able to trust yourself. A lot of people don't trust themselves. Um, and, and, and I think that's part of that kind of clutching on the other things. If you're truly independent, you could trust yourself. If you're connected to yourself, if you could sit in that stillness and you could accept what's coming up. That's the other thing. It's not a pick and choose. It's an all or nothing event. If you can get to that stage, then I think you're ready for shadow work. But, you know, it takes time to be at that point. You know, it takes some darkness. It takes toughness in life. And I actually think, you know, the first portion of your life is really to, to go experience and build and not try to get to this place of, of holiness because you haven't experienced yet. You got to go experience first before you can start readjusting, um, taking in and conceptualizing what you've learned and then going on a route um, with that information. Without that information, you're going to get told what to do and you're just going to believe different things. Um, I think that's part of, of the human experience, at least the first half of it. Yeah. So why do you think shadow work has become so popular then? Like what's, what, what are the forces that are building this thing? I think it sounds cool. I think it's fun it to say. I think, <laughs> I think it's like a, you know how people like to just fit in. It's, it's one of those things that kind of took off and, and it's a need. It could actually be part of the unconscious, just needing it, needing to release some of these shadows because we're so superficial. The persona and the mask is on, you know, that's when the shadows are built. When you put that mask on, you're, you're kind of, you know, suppressing where your true self would act. And when you, the more you build from that mask and that persona, um, you know, one day it's going to come up and scare you. So you gotta, you gotta, to keep track of it. Uh, I've seen a lot of people that, that, you know, everything's going well, they're like, Oh, everything's fine. And then you, you just see it coming. You could feel it coming and then it comes and, and they're scared. It's a scary moment. And that's why I say, you know, you, you gotta be ready for it. Cause if you're not ready for it, you might go into it and then be so scared. It'd be tough to get back to that space. So you're actually hurting yourself in the process. I feel like that happened to me when I was 18 and I took way too many mushrooms, <laughs> wasn't prepared just wanted to have a good time. And, uh, and I kind of stepped a little bit too far and lost my footing and lost myself down the river. But, uh, yeah, it, it, and it's been a slow progressive, you know, 
conservative attempt to wade in the water, come back, take what I need to figure that out because I, I wouldn't ever want to get back to that stage where uh, I just, I drowned again because it was too much yes. for me, you know, and I, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't prepared. I didn't even know what I was doing. I was kind of drunk as well. Like I was partying heaps and, um, Ooh. we just, we just, uh, had too many grams. And it wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it's funny. Cause like, you know, drugs, like, especially those kind of drugs, they really do unleash the unconscious in a sense. And I love that you said you kind of drowned it in it. And that's what happens. There's too much unconscious going on. The unconscious is like, uh, symbolizes the water, the ocean, you get drowned with it. And it's really tough to come back out of it because it could really confuse you. And then that's part of that, you know, strengthening and experiencing that I was just talking about before you get into it, you know, that first half of life, because you got to build we'll call it the salt, the alchemical salt or that toughness in you uh, to be able to deal with uh, some of these things that do happen in life and in shadow work, especially because that's the roots. That's the the deep traumatic roots that you really haven't even seen. And sometimes people are completely shocked and it's shocking every single time. It's shocking what comes up um, and, and what's inside of our memories. And I'm, I'm wondering, even with those drugs, sometimes those drugs release memories that you never knew were there five, six, even younger than that. Yeah, um, it, it certainly did, and I, I won't bore the audience because I'm speaking about it before <laughs> on the show. But uh, no, you're ab- you're absolutely right, man. It, it, it's uh, it, it is amazing what comes up, and um, you know, you don't think you just don't have that awareness. You know, I, I like I'm interested in you talking about this kind of first portion of your life. You know, this this to me that sounds like it's almost you know you're almost saying that it's necessary to build an ego to have some kind of sense of self, find out who you are, what you like you know, before you're at a place where you can start kind of questioning things along the way, you know, is that what you mean? Yeah, I think I do. Yeah. Um, and, and this is a tough one because the egos gets attacked by a lot of people it? and it has this, this little tone to it. But what I like to say is we start off as an object in this world and there's a point where we realize we're a subject. We're not an object being carried around by our parents. We're a subject that can act on objects now. And that's that consciousness or ego consciousness point. And it's a weak ego. It's still very dependent on other people, especially your parents. But as you grow and you strengthen it, you start to build that independence, you know, and, and it's good, I think, to have that because you're starting to learn things. You're starting to do stuff on your own. You can you can build some uh, courage. You can build some, some confidence in yourself, some esteem. Um, but then sometimes that ego just starts to inflate like we were talking about. And then that's that humbling moment um, that, that usually comes, life hits you. And I think that's the best way to do it because if you're not strong at that point of trying to get to yourself or trying to understand life or, or grow, you know, it's easy to give up. It's easy to start to look for comforts and just kind of settle. Yeah, that's really cool. So when you're, so you, you have clients as well that you, you coach, in therapy and, and all that kind of thing. And what, what are like some of the typical things that people come to you with um, and some of the things that they want to work on? Yeah, the interesting thing, well, beforehand I was working sort of like through gyms and, and personal clients. So it was, it was, it was more just like basic life coaching, but lately like online, I've been getting a lot of different coaches that need coaching, uh, which is really interesting to see. But um, I, I think it's a lot of coaches are going out there and they're reading a book, they're doing a little work, they're feeling good and they're kind of rushing it. They're like a, they're like a comet shooting out like, uh, you know, through the sky and then they kind of fizzle and fade out a little bit and they burn themselves out. And, you know, I like to tell them, you know, before you do anything, anything, you have to have yourself in order. Um, And that's part of that spiritualization, you know, building some discipline, getting to know yourself, uh, doing some meditations, doing some journaling, whatever it takes, whatever works for you. But um, I think a lot lot of coaches are going out there, they're noticing, you know, that, that they don't have their true self yet. And then it scares them because now they're projecting this information and they feel like they have to live up to it and they're scared of it. And there's this back and forth going on. So, um, you know, I, and it does scare me a little bit because anyone can call themselves a coach mm. and it, and it's like, you're, you're, you're taking someone's life, not life in your hands, but you are, you know, if they're going to trust you, you could be shaping their life in a direction. And if you don't have your life in order, how could you help someone else at least come to some kind of sense of their life? Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's really difficult. And then that's part of just experience. I think experience is so huge because when I see somebody and I see, oh, that's an old, I've been through that. You can kind of empathize with them. You can understand it a little bit more. Um, and you don't have those judgments. You know, that's another thing with a lot of these younger coaches is they'll start judging people like, oh, that's that person. But like, 
if you truly lived it and you've already experienced it, then you're not judging them. You understand where they're coming from. You can get to a place of kind of standing next to them instead Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, on a pedestal in front of them. So I think that's really important also. Yeah. And yeah, that's good. So, so for, for potential coaches listening, then coming to a place where you have your life in order, how, how would you define that? Like what's, what are some sort of practical ideas there for people that are like, I feel like I'm ready to be a coach, but I'm kind of not too sure. Um, you know, maybe I have some things I need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I think first would be, you know, look for a program. You know, if you're if you're somebody that's into this, look for a, like a really, a really good program that'll that'll get you in front of some clients that or at least maybe some of your students just to, to, to just to work through because the coaching conversation is interesting and it's a little bit of psychology, but it's there's a lot more to it. You know, you want to create a space for people. You want to make people feel comfortable. Um, you, you don't want to come across judgmental and it's a tricky balance. And then there's also the little energy shifts that you have to listen for you know it's this active listening uh, maybe even intuitional listening in a sense or you know where you're where you're listening to yourself and what's coming through you you're listening and watching them um i think that if you really want to help people you should worry about yourself first and get yourself in order and make sure you have the right tools so then you can truly help someone um because a lot of people like i said i feel like are coming out and they're looking for maybe a little bit of attention and maybe it's a little bit of a therapy for some of these coaches that are coming out that aren't fully there yet I think that's really true. I think it is a bit of a therapy for, for people, you know, yeah. is that, that fat again of, uh, you know, and I, I certainly went through it as well. I didn't really want to become a coach necessarily when I started doing YouTube, but I was writing my first book and I was talking about some of my own experiences as a way, looking back to, to tie those knots, you know, there's so much, there's so many different ways to communicate in this day and age. And we don't, only have to speak to one person now we can speak to a global audience so i think youtube and i think instagram and even medium as a blog um as a blogging platform people will use that to um, as a form of therapy you know is anyone else like me out there yes oh thank you so brave that's courageous you know and they're like oh wow but maybe maybe i'm not as alone as i thought i was but i think if you if you want to take that next step and and actually help people as a coach, then you you kind of have to almost be past that point to a degree, to the point where you know that, you know, you're, you know, where your triggers lie. Um, so there's no transference, but you also can recognize as well, um, that, uh, you know, it's not necessarily I'm in this to figure myself out as well. It's like, hang on, this, this hour is just for you. (laughs) No, exactly. Yeah. And it's, and it's, and it's tough to say because, you know, I have a heart and I, and I feel for people and I can't say like, Hey, you should be a coach right now. Um, so, so what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that they're, that they're there, they're ready. They have their, their, their values set, um, before we, we move forward, especially if it's a coach. Um, and then like you, to answer your question earlier, um, you know, I really like to look at the initial conditions of what someone's coming in with. Uh, I'm a former meteorologist. So like initial conditions for me are huge. You know, what, what's the environment? You know, I like to, I like to, uh, I should write a book relating the, the mental environment and the, uh, and the atmosphere, but you know, what's the environment, what are they coming in with? And then some people, you know, they have that sense of conscious and unconscious. So you can go a little bit deeper. Some people don't even understand that. So you gotta, you gotta explain to them their mind mind in a sense and, and get them a little bit more education. Um, and then other work, especially what people like are these tools like visualizations or different coaching activities that'll get people to spaces thinking about things that they never thought about before. Um, and then lastly, what I want to say for anyone listening is if you're a coach, like when I started, I came out wanting to save people. I'm the savior and it's easy to get in that savior complex and you got to keep yourself humble as a coach um, and understand that it's the person that you have to listen to and it's their decision on where they want to go. You're just a tour guide without a destination. They have the destination. You're kind of just trying to help them get there in a sense. So I think Mm -hmm. that's really important because a lot of coaches can influence people to do things that they wouldn't want to do. And then they can look back at it and, and, and regret it. Um, and you don't want that as a coach to have a regret. (laughs) So true. Yeah. We we can take on these assumptions. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing a bit of content with uh, a foundation at the moment. I do a lot of podcasting with, uh, one of the psychologists, the, the, the top dog psychologists at the foundation, we're working through the kind of these assumptions that counselors and psychologists can make in, in the one-on-one therapeutic context. And 
you know, some of them are exactly to your point, you know, that I know as a psychologist, you know, this is a poor assumption that I know where this person needs to go to, or I know how this person can change without reminding ourselves that this person is completely different, has an entirely different set of experiences, biology, you know, social conditioning. And the idea really is to kind of walk with them and let them kind of get a feel for who they want to become and, and why, why they're even in the counseling process to begin with, as opposed to, mm. well, haven't you just tried this? <laughs> Take a month. Yeah. And it's important because some people don't even know what they want. You start asking them and you start digging and they, and they were like, Oh my gosh, I don't even want that. Or wait, that, that value I've been valuing, that doesn't mean anything to me or that belief that I've been believing. Ugh, that doesn't, that's not true. Uh, and they're, they're amazing moments. They're tough in the moment. Uh, but you look back, you laugh at it. Remember when you said that? Remember when we came to that? It's like when you go camping and it starts raining and then you reminisce on it. Uh, in the moment, it's tough, but you're going to in the later, uh, at a later date, kind of laugh at it and, and, and see it as a positive. Mm. So, so when you, when you came across Jung, so you, you, you found that, that, that you read that first quote, um, what, what was, what was the next steps like for you then? Was it just mind blown to have to start reading his work or were you looking at some of people talking about him on YouTube or kind of, how was your, how was your journey from there? Yeah. Young led me to Nietzsche and then young and Nietzsche, I, I was typing, typing them in the YouTube and I saw Jordan Peterson popping up and then that's like his whole game. And I was like, Whoa, how I have, who is this guy? Canadian professor. And he got really popular when I was just going through this. So this is like 2015. Mm. And I think he was getting popular right before the election here in 2016. So it was like right at that time, I just caught it. And, um, you know, he, he, and he talks about Nietzsche and, and, and Jung all the time. And, um, you know, it really was just that individual individualized because, you know, I like the collective, I love people, but I always felt that, you know, it, it's, it's me that I have to take care of. Um, and, and if I could take care of myself, then it takes care of everyone around me in a mm. sense. I'm doing my part. So I, I was really attracted to that, that taking your own cross, taking your own stand, you know, walking your own ground and, and doing your own work and not complaining in that victimhood. I was really against that victimhood, you know, because just working my whole life to get on TV, it, it wasn't handed to me. I had to work really hard for it. And I understand, you know, through my family, what hard work can get you if you could do it. Um, and work is something that a lot of people are scared of or, or or, or they don't even, you know, they just don't want to do it. I'm not sure what it is, but that, that's the only thing that's going to manifest. You know, everyone's sitting around humming and doing the manifestations. True work, that'll get you to manifest a lot. I can promise you. Yeah, well, I feel like what Jordan Peterson did is he outlined the reason why responsibility and, and meaningful work is, is, is a good thing. Because we, we, we've heard about these ideas, you know, ever since we were told to clean our rooms, you know, but we've never... I don't, well, not that we have all never, but clearly a major, major group of people have never really had that, the context of why responsibility and good work is actually a positive and how it will help your life. And, you know, you started to talk about very, very deep things, um, you know, carrying the cross, um, Sisyphus pushing the boulder up the hill, you know, why that's necessary because so much of the, existential and nihilistic pain that so many young people go through is why, why do this? You know, given that we're going to die anyway, what's the point of responsibility? And I think his little niche, um, was, uh, was explaining what, why it's so necessary. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. And just hearing what you were saying, that's how I used to think. I got to a point where I was like, all right, I made it on TV. I'm still not happy. What's the point now? Like, come yeah. on now. What's the point? And I saw life is meaningless and that was this really scary place, but that's the darkness. And, and I like the darkness because the darkness can bring the light. Um, it'll, it'll set you up for a good condition to start taking yourself serious, but you have to be careful because it can also bring you the other way. Um, yeah. So, so I'm glad that I found that light. I've always had that spirit in me um, and I was able to see through it, but um, you know, it's, 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 the other thing is, is, is what you kind of spoke about earlier is the spirituality, religious aspect with that going away, that void goes into other things. Now government, a lot of people get very hyper about the government and it's almost like a religion in a sense, mm. um, you know, in different like little aspects here and there that people kind of get stuck on, you could see that void being filled. And, you know, if there's not a good structure in order, 
then then that void is all over the place. And I think that the, that is what Peterson was trying to speak about. And even Young, if you get into Young, if you really get into his work, his work's very spiritual. You know, it's it's very spiritual in the sense with your dreams. You're like starting to talk to your dreams. You're starting to do work with your dreams and actually trying to shape your dreams to see what's actually going on and and interact with your dreams. You know, that's a spiritual practice in a sense. So um, I think that spiritual aspect was lost in life and, and, and people are trying to find it all over the place. And, you know, I think it's right here. I think it's right here within all of us and we can connect to it. Um, if we could build that stillness, if we could build that connection and, um, and build some kind of discipline within. Yeah. You, you, you do see that spiritual component manifest itself in, in, in politics and, and sports, you know, especially in really partisan countries, you know, you can look at what's going on in the U S now with the Democrats and the Republicans. It's, it's literally just like, you know, following your favorite tennis player or your favorite football club, you know, it's just, you're seeing, you know, no matter what they say, I'm red all the way, or I'm blue all the way, or I'm this way and that way. And if you just step back far enough, I, I love that. I got that idea from um, Ram Dass. He would always talk about stepping back far enough and just having a look, you know, you, you just start to notice these, these patterns in everything that we do. It's just sporting and putting, putting ourselves and our, our identities into these external things that, you know, we're on our deathbeds at 95 or whatever it is we get that far. Um, I don't know. I, I wonder if they're kind of trivial. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, a direct effect. I, I think it's a direct effect, you know, when those values are and, and, and that spirit's gone, it's going to go somewhere else. And it goes right to these political people that push these people to do this stuff so they can gain from it, you know, and it's a scary little business they got going on here, especially in America. I am not liking what's going on because what happens is the, the teams are now they're spreading apart. And it's getting to the point where one side is, is, is the better side. The other side is the worst side. And now, you know, everyone's judging each other based off of what political party they like. And, and then the other thing is when something happens, even if the truth is there, they're still going to defend their side, no matter why. I mean, it's like a cult. It's crazy. Um, and it's really scary. It's breaking families apart. It's breaking friendships apart. Um, and it's, and it's all based off of, uh, you know, powerful, powerful people and stuff that really doesn't mean anything in life. Yeah. Yeah. It, it must be a little bit, you know, we, we don't, uh, you know, whether, whether you're interested in politics or not, it, it must be a little bit, um, scary, I suppose, because you're like, at the end of the day, these are the kind of the, uh, this is the foundation, uh, of, of what allows me to live my life in a normal way, get along with people. And when that starts to descend and, and, uh, you know, we move further into decadence and things and tribalism starts to grow. Um, you know, you can't help, but let your mind kind of wander a little bit like shit. What's life going to be like in 2030? <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, 2021, I can't wait. And now it's here. And, you know, here in America, we got the, the capital, there's stuff going on there. Everyone's fighting more. And it's like, oh, it's, it's not good yet. 2030, I don't know. If we go at this route, I don't know. I might have to go uh, take a take a boat out in the middle of the ocean or something. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Hey, but the, uh, but the good thing is if you have yourself and you have your good spirituality practice and you're really enjoying life, then, then you're not dependent on these things and you can kind of make your own fun out of life. And, and that's really what I've been trying to do with myself, you know, going on crazy bike rides, doing crazy content, whatever I could do to, 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 to make life exciting, you know, it's mm -hmm. in my hands and I don't need to be dependent on, on the government to provide it or the news or, or, or media. And yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I'm, I'm an optimist. I do always think if you look back on history, human beings, you know, humanity has a way of coming out on top. You know, we, we, we respond to the, the, the pressure and the resistance and we adapt and we evolve. Um, and, um, you know, I, I do think that with social media now and more power that the individual has ever had, you know, in the entirety of existence with this little phone thing, um, more and more people, I don't feel like I'm in my little bubble of who I follow and the algorithms that I'm uh, attached to when I say this, that more and more people are spreading, you know, messages like you are that, Hey, you can find that happiness inside and you can do what makes you happy. And the more, the more of that inner peace that we all get subjectively, the more that will, you know, form in, into a coherent uh, co collective. So yeah, I definitely do agree with you for sure. 
Yeah. And that's, that's part of why I like to tell people to spiritualize themselves. Cause I think that's, you know, it's crucial. It really is crucial. Again, you know, if you're not, and you're looking outside of you. And then the other thing is, is with this, with this, like, you know, self spirituality, we'll call it is it's in your hands. So you're not dependent, you know, if someone lets you down or if your leader lets you down or whatever it is, you're going to be let down. Um, another thing is, is fear. So fear, when I worked on the TV, when I worked in TV, fear is like the big thing, you know, that's what gets eyes on the TV. Um, if people, are fearful. If you're pushing fearful news, they're going to watch that builds ads and revenue. Um, and, and when you're fearful, it's really tough to, to live in a place of self, you know, that's, a, that, that's going to be a very dependent place because you're scared, you're closed, you're not open. It's tense. Um, and, it, and it's, and it's draining on the body with fear. It's directly related to stress. You're going to be in that sympathetic nervous system. You're going to be draining your energies. Um, and, and when you don't have like that, that sense of God, you know, that sense of community or, or whatever, it was back in the day with religion, then there's more fear, you know, there's more kind of meaninglessness. And I think it's really important for people to, to see that, to see that people are, are taking themselves serious and they're starting to see the improvements. They're starting to speak differently. Um, it's really powerful. If you know somebody that was, you know, one way before, then they went through a journey and now you're seeing them again. And they're like a whole different person because then it's like, Oh wait, something really did happen. Um, and I wish I could show people like my hands are softer. Uh, some of the dryness went out of it, like all these crazy things. Um, but, I, but, but you have to experience it yourself. And that's a difficult thing. And, and a lot of this work is invisible and you can't see it going on. You kind of have to trust the process. Yeah. So let, let's speak to the work now. I think, so what, what are some of the tools that you use with your clients? Um, tools, no doubt that you've probably used yourself as well. You know, people talk about journaling, meditation. Um, do you have like a specific program or, or a concept that you, 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 you use? Yeah. Well, I'm building programs right now, a couple of programs. I'm building one more of like the individuation process, which we can get into, which is that journey towards the self. Um, I'm also thinking about doing this program for exactly for creators um, to get them in that place so they, they can take their self uh, serious, build some good discipline in their self. But for me, it's really about, you know, getting to the to getting to the roots of, of, of the client, you know, understanding where they're at, what their roots are, working through the roots, making sure they know where they want to go, asking those right questions. Um, and then I have all the tools in the world that I need, uh, based off of what they say, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to have a, a structure to put people through because then I feel like I'm just kind of slapping a, a stamp on them and, and moving them along along. I like to do it more analytically as like a coach. I like to call it analytical coaching, you know, so then afterwards I'll, I'll send them a whole document of, of some, some research that I did on, on what we did. I'll send them some exercises to work on. Um, and then in the moment, you know, I like to make sure that, that it's a, it's a very serious, not a serious conversation where it's like scary, but you know, we're both focused, you know, we do a little bit of, of breathing or some meditating before. Um, and then, uh, through, through the conversation, usually, um, it's guided to a place where, you know, they, they come to, to a few things that they, that they want to work on for the next session. Um, and then some things that they're going to work on beforehand. So maybe I'll tell them if they're fearful, Hey, why don't you go out and try to like talk to a few individuals, tell them how, how, uh, you know, they look great today or you, or you love their outfit or, or have a great day or whatever it is. Um, happy Monday, whatever it is. Um, and then goofy little things. Like I'll tell people, um, especially with anxieties, I'll, I'll have them on the podcast or I'll do a fake little podcast with them. So a lot of role playing and then I'll put myself in the scene and try to get them used to kind of just talking and, and getting themselves out there. So, um, yeah, a lot of different things, obviously. I just heard, I think that was my, I just heard something in my, in my, uh, microphone. <laughs> I was like, how loud am I? Like, oh, he doesn't, he doesn't like humble you coaching. Obviously. Yeah, exactly. I was like, what? No, dude, I love that. I think that's so awesome. Um, so how many, how many clients have you had on the podcast? I reckon that's such a cool idea. Um, I don't like to say who the clients are, but three. True, true, true. Yep. Yeah. We'll put their first and last name out in the show notes and we'll make sure <laughs> knows that. <laughs> link in the bio, link, link in the, bio. In the, in the comment, in the notes. <laughs> yeah, still work with you, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, and I think that's important really to keep that, that, that privacy. Yeah, I try to keep the messages private. I use a, a private messaging app. Um, I think it's really important uh, to keep that privacy in because uh, they have to feel safe and they have to feel like they're speaking and, and it's not getting out um, mm. in that moment. So I think it's really important. Yeah. And, and, you know, these are things that, uh, 
these are very common, you know, anxieties, you know, the, the, the inability to express yourself, the, the inability to um, know how to express yourself. I feel like getting someone on a podcast, you know, that that's, that's tricky. That's that it's kind of like a cooler way than, than getting someone just to speak in front of an audience. But I feel like so many people haven't ever actually had the opportunity to uh, talk about themselves or, or figure out, you know, who they are in words, in other words, you know, um, making it cognitive, like, Oh, this is actually who I am. This is actually what I think. And these are the words that I use, you know, because uh, so much of today's world is, um, it's kind of passive, you know? So I think, yeah, I really like that idea, man. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. And even if they don't come on just to have like, you know, you and I kind of talking now, it's just to say, Hey, let's do it. Like, we'll do a podcast scene. I'll do my whole intro and whatever I need to do, put them in that role. Yes. Um, even though, even though it's not live, they'll still feel a little pressure. They're talking about their self. Um, and another thing is people like to hear someone interested about them. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't interested in other people. They're just interested in themselves. So just mm -hmm. providing that interest in someone's life can really get them to open up and start to finally uh, break free from that, that, that tightness that they've been holding for all mm -hmm. these years man that's so true um there there was a guy uh who i interviewed uh in san fran and i've had him on this show a couple of times as well kevin briggs he used to be a patrol officer on the golden gate bridge and he's responsible for talking with hundreds of people who were literally on the bridge going to commit suicide and talk mm -hmm. them down he had a couple of people uh, that, that jumped even after the conversation. And, you know, that's really tricky. And, you know, he, he actually spoke about his own mental health issues with, um, you know, being on antidepressants and all this kind of thing. But he said time and time again, cause I was counseling at the time and I said, you know, what, what are some tools that really helped you? And he said, dude, just listening, you know, so like nine times out of 10, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, you know, these people felt so alone. They felt like no one cared about them. They felt like they, not even that no one cared about them, that no one even knew they existed, you know, mm. in the same way that we just walk past a light. If it's faulty, we don't even recognize it, you know, and you know, each, each, each person's experience is, is different, of course, but just that, that, that really conscious listening, it's not just, I'm waiting for you to finish talking so I can say something. It's wow. Like, you know, going back and forward. And, and that, that unfortunately is a skill that, you know, is, um, we really need to get better at, I think as a society, <laughs> sorry, I'm not trying to be harsh to all you, uh, fantastic listeners out there. <laughs> <laughs> We're throwing some punches today. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Guys, you're gonna, no you're not going to be able to release this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but the, you know, the other thing, a lot of people in conversations, they're so worried about what they're going to say, or, or if they're fearful, let's say they're fearful, they have social anxiety. They're so scared about talking. So they're, they're working through what they're going to say that they're not listening and they're not picking up. And what I like to tell people is every single person you meet, even if you don't like them, they could teach you something. There's something you could learn. So if you stay curious in a conversation, you can open yourself up. And then when you start hearing things then you'll start seeing things. And when I mean seeing things, not with your eyes, you'll start feeling it, seeing it in that sense. And you'll really get a good grip on, on what's behind some of the words that people are saying, you know, um, maybe even see, uh, what uh, people's attachments are. You can, you can learn a lot just by listening to someone, but that, that curiosity and, and keeping yourself open in a conversation is huge. Um, and, and that's huge for couples, especially, you know, when you're in an argument, a lot of the, everyone just wants to beat each other up in the argument. Uh, a really good thing. I think it was Jordan Peterson that spoke on this was to, to, to repeat back what the other person said and then say what you want to say. And I think that's really good. So everyone can hear what's what the, you know, you can hear what you just said while the other person's repeating it, they can hear it. And then they can introspect while they're saying it. So they make sure what they're saying is in response to that and not just out of, you know, hate or, or anger or emotion. Yeah, it's that, That's really good, isn't it? So, yeah. So you're making sure that, so the other person knows that you haven't listened to what they've said, but then twisted it in your head, but you can actually say, this is exactly what you mean. Now I'm responding to exactly what you mean, as opposed to what I wanted you to say. So I could fucking win the conversation. <laughs> yeah. 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 But to do that in the moment, it's tough. So <laughs> both parties have to be on board. Oh, <laughs> you trying to put the pins out. <laughs> uh, That's yeah. awesome. That's really cool. Cool. Mm. So what's, um, what's some, so you, you're building a program at the moment. Um, aside from work, man, what, what does a daily day in the life look like for you? It's crazy. <laughs> it's a lot. 
<laughs> because I'm the only person here. Uh, some people are like, wow, like people are doing your podcast for you. It must be nice. I'm like, no, no, no. This is all me editing the podcast, putting out the content, creating the content, making the graphics, you know, recording the podcast, talking, doing the research, everything. Um, and now I'm doing a membership page where I'm going to put this whole re resource together. It's going to be mind, which is psychology, body, which is wellness, and then energy, you know, which I think really is in both mind and body and kind of connects the two. And then do a whole resource based off of all these words that's going to be updating weekly so members can go to that site and learn what they need to learn. Um, yeah. And then clients will have access to it too. So I can say, hey, head over to that site and then I'll continue to update it so it'll grow. And then over time, I'll have a nice resource as I continue to build uh, Humble You. So um, I think that's important. I think education in this kind of sense is, is, is key to get what we were talking about, people interested in their self. And if they start to see some of this education that's out there and start to see that they could do some of this work now, and it's not just these enlightened, you know, people uh, hovering in midair that, that they can really uh, make a change. I think that's so important for, for the next step in, in, in civilization. Cause I feel like we're at a point where we need to change. Yeah. There's a transition period. Well, there's a lot of stuff bubbling to the surface in the collective conscious unconscious right now that yeah we, we weren't really you know we kind of knew it was there but but you know no one had ever said hey that's that's there and now we're like oh that's there <laughs> so <laughs> pull that out that's awesome cool. that's really cool so this is your full-time your full-time psychologist this is this is what you're doing yeah. 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 This is full time. Um, and then I'm going to write the book that, uh, that uh, that's coming out later this year. It's going to be called the unconscious spirit. And this is going to be a, a work about the unconscious mind. You know, my journey, um, was, was getting to this place that I noticed there was a lot more going on under the surface. And then once I started listening to it, um, it was speaking to me and it was intelligent in a sense. It wasn't intelligent where it was saying exactly yes as it knows, but it was giving me a picture. And then the more that I dug in, the more that I start to see, the more I was allowing to come up and it started guiding me a lot. So it's really about, you know, kind of showing people how we start off in that objective space in the void, how we gain consciousness where the modern ego kind of got to, and then humbling the ego back to this in-between space between the conscious and unconscious, starting to li listen to the unconscious and then build a little spirituality with it. So there's a little section at the end, uh, spiritualize you in a new self order or, or the, the last two chapters that really try to get people to that place that we were talking about, where they could start to take their own cross in, in their own hands and, and build their own growth and not copy someone else's growth story because we're all individuals. Mm, a new self order. I think that's really cool. That's really, it's a lovely play on words as well because a lot of people are fearful of a new world order out there. So that, that's, yeah, awesome. that's why I use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. Awesome, man. Well, uh, every now and then I'll ask a, um, I'll ask this question to my guests um, just to round the show off um, as just kind of like a final way for listeners to really connect and um, if there was one thing or one or two, you know, topics that you and I spoke about today that you really wanted the listeners to, to hone in on and, and cement it into their minds, what, um, what would they be? I'll say the first uh, is that that idea is kind of spiritualizing yourself. Get curious about yourself. Get curious about your mind. Start to watch your triggers, especially, you know, what's triggering you. Try to get under those roots. Watch your dreams, journal your dreams, and don't think that you can analyze them based off of, you know, what you're seeing. But if you start writing them down and just kind of looking at them and watching them progress over time, maybe some things can, can occur, you know, maybe some things will come up. Um, and I think that, you know, the whole process of, of spiritualizing yourself is really getting into a nice little discipline, you know, ex exercising, eating right, that whole thing, build it on your own and make it your own little great work. I think it's a great thing to do and, and kind of get excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I would say is to embrace the darkness and, and not embrace it as in letting it take you over and becoming the darkness, embrace it as in that you're strong enough to handle it. You don't have to be fearful of it and, and see, see it as a great teacher, you know, see fear as a teacher, go towards your fears, see what they're trying to teach you, you know, and see what's behind it. Because then once you could push through some of these fears, um, the lower the fear, the lower the stress, the lower the stress, the more open you are, the more parasympathetic you are, the more energy you have, you know, and it's all about energy at the end of the day. Mm, that's awesome. I really, I really like that. It is, it is all about energy in the end. It's great. Mace, thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I just want to take some time to appreciate the work you're doing. I think, like I said in the beginning, uh, you're talking about very deep topics, but you're making them really fun and exciting and also uh, inspirational as well. And it's a, a really great energy um, on your social media to, to see that as well, because as I say, so many people make it 
dull and dark and boring and, uh, you know, almost discouraging people from, you know, like, why the fuck? I don't want to hang out. I don't want to look like that. I I don't want to what, you know, but seeing someone dance and have fun as well, that, that makes it really um, encouraging. So thanks so much for the work you're doing, man. And thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, you're authentic. You can, you can hear it in your voice. You can hear it in your tone. You can hear it in your language. Uh, I truly appreciate the opportunity. It's been a great conversation and I would hope at some point you can come on my podcast and I can dig a little bit into you. I uh, truly thank you and <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, mate. Cool. Guys, thank you so much for listening and speak to you next week. Bye-bye. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the content, uh, you are more than welcome to click the link in the description below. That will take you right to a free webinar where I will be taking you exactly through how to design a framework for your life and create that mission that will bring about a sense of intrinsic value to you. Go for it.